All right, YouTube, this is another episode of Frequently Asked Questions, where we're going to ask questions from the internet that people have just been burning. Um, we're going to answer questions from the internet. What did I say? Ask. Wait, restart do, it. Do we just restart? <laughs> <laughs> What is our daily uniform and or go-to outfit? Uh, what I'm wearing now has m likely been my uniform for the last like four years. So I'm wearing like Hender Scheme Tims, which are new to me, but then a pair of fatigues and a chore coat. So in this case, I have both uh, Orslo Canoe Club collaboration pieces. But I mean, fatigues, a white shirt, a chore coat or a denim coat or like a BDU from EG, mostly fatigues, a white shirt and a jacket. Yeah, I feel like uh, pretty much what I'm wearing. I just go for a pair of, I want a pair of vintage jeans in a dream world. Um, I usually do a funky shoe and then white tee and then whatever jacket on top. I normally do a blazer, a denim jacket. I'd say that's kind of my uniform between those two jackets. Yeah. White t-shirt. Yeah, you've been doing the blazer jeans. up top lately, like the like the light washed, clearly worn jeans, mm -hmm. plain t shirt. Actually, you wore like a striped one underneath, like a plain blazer. That was cool, mm -hmm. but that's kind of your flow right now. Yeah, yeah. Haley Bieber swag, <laughs> white tee. Yeah, what is a summer essential? White t shirt. Yeah, no question. I feel like if you have a clean white tee, everything else looks cool. And yeah. even if that's like all you're wearing, if you because you gotta like strip it down throughout the day. So if you strip it down to just the white tee. You got a nice pair of jeans, cool shoes. That's good enough. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. That That's really the best answer. Maybe maybe also, if you have like cool sunglasses, any look is cool then. Like, that's true. Because you can just be wearing like normal stuff. But if you have on a pair of like stunner shades, it's a different, uh, it's a different vibe. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's, maybe that's the answer too. Yeah. Runner up to white tee though. What is an item you should not skimp on? In my opinion, shoes. I'm down to spend whatever on shoes. I don't know. This is going to be like super cliche, but spend money on the things that like separate you from the ground. So like your tires, your shoes and your bed, like probably like 200,000 old dudes have said that in their lifetime, but there's some truth to it. Like buy nice shoes. Um, they're going to last immeasurably longer than most other pieces in your closet, assuming you have more than one pair of shoes, but spend money on shoes. It's worth it. I think you don't want to skimp on again, white t-shirts, anything that like touches your body. So like, you know, underwear, t-shirts, socks, plus those things like aren't, there's not a big difference between a low price one and a high price one. Like the, the, the divide is not very big. Whereas like, you know, for a jacket, the jacket can be a hundred dollars. It can be $2,000. So it feels like you can get like affordable luxury that way. And I think those things make you feel different too. So they're like a nice way to like begin your day right with getting dressed when all those are like clean, even if all you did was put on a pair of jeans and nothing else. I mean, if all those things are high end, then you're going to be looking great. Yeah. So and feeling think, good too. Um, yeah. I mean, I think those are, those would be mine. Yeah. Bas you're getting at anything yeah. you're wearing. Often. Basics. Yeah. Yeah, 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 basics yeah, yeah. yeah. What is your favorite cheese? Oh, wow. Not like a, like a, just a pecorano Romano. Yeah. You like, like, a, like a Parmesan. Cheese. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I would say like goat cheese crumbles, you know, for like a salad or like Munster for like a grilled cheese. Goat cheese is good though. I just want a Parmesan. Yeah. Craft Parmesan or fancy Parmesan. It's all good. Um, wait, so do you think that we're, are we choosing for other people? Yes. Yeah. And it, yeah. Okay. I think you're going to want to say engineered garments, but you, but my, it might be Orslo for you. It's I very, was just saying, yeah. It's very I've, straightforward, but but it's still cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I think that my mind was like, oh, well, I love EG. But realistically, I mean, I'm wearing a bunch of Orslo today. I've pretty much only been drawn towards things that are plain, good. The fit feels nice. There's longevity to it. I would be Orslo. Interesting. Yeah. I, I think that's fair. Okay. What, what about, what do you think you would be? Cause I have an, I, I have, I have an idea. Go ahead. I, I would say that you would be Marnie because like you really like, like higher end exquisite, the sort of, uh, not easy. Like, 
I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. You would be Marnie because you like nice things for the sake of them being nice. Yeah. You know what it, I'm there's saying? There's definitely like, there's a goofiness to it that I am not, but, but I want to be more of, I guess. Maybe that's what, that, yeah, that's yeah. what's hard. I couldn't that pick. you can but appreciate. I do like the, the grunginess and it's still like fancy. Like those two things mm-hmm. are my favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You'd be Marnie. Ian would be need, Ian would be capital. Ian would be capital. Yeah. Ian's capital. He has to be capital. Bunch of colors, bunch of bandanas, bunch of patterns. The wilder, the better. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else? Alec. Alec. Alec would be. Alec would be like realistically, Alec would be like acronym or something. He's like he he, oh, he yeah. is a human multi tool. Like yeah, you're right. He's acronym. That's he can like climb. It. He is like a trained MMA fighter mm-hmm. and fighting beyond like yeah. Alec would be acronym. Okay. And Drew? Drew would be... You're better at this than I am. Drew would be... I mean... Maybe he would be something like Our Legacy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Kind of like... That's he, good. He also r- yeah. likes like pieces that are Styly like maybe stuff. closer to black or gray. Yeah, I would yeah, say Our okay. Legacy. That's kind of like good. the way he styles it too is like okay. pants to the ground. Yeah, yeah. What about Graham? Grambo, our our dreamboat. Who would he be? Graham, Graham would be like. What's something like kind of all American? Yeah, something all American. You know, I think <laughs> Graham's like a truck. Oh, double RL. Yeah, yeah. Graham's kind of like a double RL. He's kind of like. I don't know. He's not like a lady white, but there's a there's like an American classiness to yeah, Graham. An American classic. Yeah. So like, yeah, it'd be like a double RL, like a, a Levi's vintage clothing. He mm-hmm. could fit like that kind of vibe. Just like, like, when you close your eyes and you're like, what's like a an all American boy? That's Graham. So I'd have to say probably double RL would be pretty good for like a that. Tom Petty song. Yeah, he he is a Tom Petty song. I actually have something to contribute here. I would say this is maybe I wouldn't call this like a trend. I would say it's part of the larger trend, which was I feel like I got into clothing as did many other men my age via through like raw denim boots, wax jackets, this and that. And I feel like so many dudes got into fashion in that like condensed two, three, four year period. And it was all around like, you know, I got to have the heaviest fabrics, this and that then dudes got into fashion. They're like, oh, wait, it's cool. You can just dress however you want. You don't have to just wear like heavy shit that's going to last for 400 years because yeah, I mean, most I, of the time you're not like doing anything in it anyway. I think people got like into clothes yep. and then wanted to take it. And once they got like everything covered, they wanted to take it one step further. Yep. And then, and then I think we've got really avant-garde with things, yep. especially for men's for the first time, not ever, but definitely like predominantly. Mm-hmm. And then now, and then we get into these kids that like, vintage stuff and archive stuff because it's like now like how much rare could it get and that's like then like only one things, then yeah. that's it so i think that's where that's at i, I, I think we're going back to like kind of i think we're going to go back to like work wearing i i think so cowboy too. shit i think all, everybody yeah. i think like there was definitely they're gonna thing. it's cyclical yeah we wanted everybody wanted to push their fits and wear like more fashion stuff but now i mean i feel like i find myself dressing this way so i'm not saying that like i'm a marker of larger trends but i feel like a lot of dudes are like i tried the fashion stuff i still like fashion but i just want to go back to what i was originally comfortable comfortable in like what i'm doing now like just like the normal straightforward stuff from brands that you enjoy because you like the fit or you like their story or you like the materials etc but that would be my thing like kind of going back to tone down a little bit more like elevated basics which is like such a buzz thing but it's also it's you know we see it all the time it's like hive mind the communities will decide on something and then everyone will be on that so it's like maybe that's the case but it also everyone will get focused on like kind of one thing and then copying that one thing Mm -hmm, you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like it'll find its way yeah you 
I mean, as his initial drug dealer, I can tell you that <laughs> we can, well, actually we have, we have a, we have a YouTube series that we're going to start soon. Um, that was going to feature like people's personal collections. So either personal, if it's an EG collection, that's one thing, or just like things inside your wardrobe that like yeah. are, are personal um, and have different like stories behind them and all that stuff. So we're going to do that soon. So yes. Yeah. I um, mean, I, for that series, it would likely be mostly EG, but we could also, I wouldn't mind doing a bring in my EG or I could even set up like a little rack at my house and just, that'd be fun for me. So <laughs> keep it, never cut it. I don't think it, I don't think it matters. I it mean, doesn't, it's just it doesn't like, matter. It's just a finishing technique. It's like a vintage finishing technique. It's just a runoff thing. It's just a, it's a way, it's a way of finishing the thread. It's got, it got to be a thing with collectors. I think that if those were intact, that just made it like more mm -hmm. closer to the mm -hmm. original. So this, and you know, because of a lot of those work shirts and everything, I think it's mostly on the work shirts. They do it. Um, yeah. It's like more traditional. So if you think it's cool and it's kind of funky and weird and like the original, then great. And if you don't want it, then cut it. Yeah, I mean, like if you really, if you really can't get down with the little runoff, then you can totally trim it. But that's also like, like an if you know, you know. I mean, I'd probably leave it too, though. Yeah, I would just leave it. It's yeah. cool. It gets bigger. It gets smaller. It's all over the place. There's all sorts of like theories around of why that happens. Yeah. But I mean, like, I just think that like you use different fit models. I also think that there's, it really comes down to. I guess this actually goes back to the, the, the question prior of, I just kind of, I just assume that there's like designer intention. So maybe it's meant to be worn a little larger. It's meant mm -hmm. to fit a little baggier. I've had some customers that only buy EG, for example, and they're just a medium. You know what I mean? They don't change even if the sizes change or whatever they want it to fit like the designer intended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that like, yes, it's probably getting bigger. It'll probably get smaller at some point too, but even if it's only getting bigger, you can go out designer intention or you size down. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, reach out to us. We'll give you measurements. We'll tell you what to do. We'll tell you what we think we sh we yeah, we would do with that piece. Because I feel yeah. like I feel like I do size down in EG. See, I feel like I've, I'm I'm the guy that just I'm yeah. pretty much a large through and through. In outerwear, I might go down to a medium. Like I feel like maybe not this past spring, but the spring prior, things were like massive, huge, like unbelievably big, and I would have sized down for that. But I feel like now where we're at, to answer the question, do we feel like EG is getting bigger or not? I feel like this is a much more palatable season in terms of sizing. You can go your like standard true to size with EG and it's going to look cool. It's going to look oversized the way that EG wants and not like massive. And there were definitely a couple periods where like you might've wanted to size down on a work shirt. Or something. I'd encourage people to look at not only their lookbooks, but other people look other like brands lookbooks before you buy and kind of like check out the intended, mm -hmm. um, like that's what the designer intended. And you don't have to do that. Obviously it's fashion. You do whatever the hell you want. But I just think that like, you can at least get an idea of like what the intended like silhouette and style was for that, th that yeah. given collection and then decide if that's how you want it or if you want to go down. Not Amica is another good example of a brand that runs really large and that's definitely the intended fit. And you can size down and then it still looks great or you can size true and then it's it fits the way they intend it just it's all about personal preference and, and in regards to nanamika please do look at their stylings i would say in terms of like brand stylings that the shop carries i would put nanamika at the top probably for when they put out their lookbooks like it's 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 something i love obviously because it's just like pretty solid colors the fits are all nice nothing too crazy pattern wise but like their styling sick and they make everything big and loose and flowy like they make that look much less avant-garde and much more approachable approachable in like like an active wear way like yeah, you could see yourself like fucking around in a big not amica kit doing some stuff with your body they really don't play with patterns too much or anything it's really has a lot more to do with like the silhouette and design yeah. portion and everything that's like what makes them so interesting favorite outerwear pieces to wear in fall i don't i don't i don't i don't mix it up it's it's denim jackets and it's blazers that's what i like that's yeah that, that's actually I don't true. I don't have to what I like is I don't have to think about what's underneath I just have like nice white t-shirts and I throw either of those things on and they're great and yeah, I can just good. and yeah. I can just have a million of them and it's amazing it like helps me like narrow down what I'm collecting so that's like my I mean I do like I do like wearing boots in the in the fall yeah, so I think that's like a that's a nice switch up that you get to do yeah. in the fall that you don't really do in the summer too much I mean I don't know you're wearing boots right now for me it's hoodies I like hoodies I feel good in hoodies yeah, I lied. I like sweaters. Yeah. That's yeah. actually in my closet. That's what I have. Like you are a knit guy. I have like, yeah. if I'm looking at rows of things that I have, the, the sweaters is outperforming everything. Yeah. Yeah. So Hoodies I'm going to, I'm going to walk it back. I, mine's sweaters. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, we have two different things from Orslo. Coming for this fall. Technically three. We've yeah. got a bunch of the, like, the merch is about to drop again soon, depending on when this comes out. It might have already done that. Um, but we've got, so we've got merch now. We've got merch later. We've got, we've got, like, a lot of things in the hopper there. We have another Lady White collaboration on the way. Mm-hmm. We have like some small goods and stuff like that. Yeah. That, that, that'll that be dropping here and there. Like m- this wouldn't fall into collaboration, but like, yeah, like mugs maybe. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yep. Matchbooks, all that stuff kind of coming back here and there. Um, I feel like, is there anything else? I feel like we're forgetting something, but the most pressing, the, f- the, the thing coming soonest will be that Orslo stuff. And if you've been around on the internet and the various places it's you might know roughly what it is but it's similar to what we did last fall for uh but it ain't a restock so it don't ain't a restock. start banging our line about yeah, that it's, it's different. not that it's different but it's yeah. if you like that you'll like this yeah we kind of yes. talked about this two days ago yeah we're, we're definitely there there's there's a lot of things in the works right now um that we're sort of buttoning up still so there there's there's the an- the short answer is just yes uh there there's there's definitely some capsules coming there's going to be some more collaborations with new brands there there's quite a bit on the way with with as far as like us doing like capsule stuff for mm-hmm. canoe club specifically so and that's on your the, thing on the tip of like rework stuff specifically too i think we're kind of getting the ball rolling on that but yeah we're open to that yeah, if any brands are watching, yeah, hit us up. Hit us up. How do you balance pieces that need to be worn in slash broken in, such as denim, in like a large wardrobe? I think a lot of, I don't personally struggle with this, but a lot of dudes struggle with, I've got so much clothes, how do I work something in to my wardrobe without forgetting about all the other things that they love so much? So, I mean... I, I don't know. I just work in phases. I think mm-hmm. I just kind of like I'll dress get off a into chair. a look. You know what I mean, or a thing that I'm that I'm doing at the time, and I just sort of like commit to that. For I wear I wear that for a little while and yeah. see how I like it. You know, so I think that's a situation where if you're looking for like, are you need to break in a new pair of raw denim? I mean, first and foremost, I guess that I don't really personally do that too much anymore. I really like having I like vintage denim. I just I'm not in the mood to break things in any longer, but I still totally see like why to do it. And I still keep a pair on deck all the time um, that I'm sort of working on here and there. I think maybe if it's like a big problem and you've got a lot of stuff in your wardrobe, focus on a one wash or something. So you're really Mm -hmm. not like spending so much time breaking and you can wear it right away and it's not a problem. You know what I mean? Like that way you're not like so focused on like, oh man, I gotta like, I gotta run these for weeks at a time just to get them to mold, Mm -hmm, let mm -hmm. alone wear in. I mean, and if that's your thing, then that's, then, then you're like, and just do like that the denim guy do that yeah just so then focus just commit on other for a couple stuff. weeks but i think that that's the thing when you get too many things in your wardrobe it's like i think guys have the tendency to have a lot of redundancies in their closet um similar things in different colors yeah and if it's stuff that you're not wearing every single like i have a lot of vintage jeans but i cycle all of them you know what i mean yeah. i wear a lot of different ones and maybe i'll wear one for two weeks and i'll wear another for two weeks or just, you know, something like that but if you're not going back to it and want to wear it, and if it's like getting stuck in the queue, then you probably just don't need it in there or just, I don't know. I feel like sometimes with guys style, just like let yourself off the hook a little bit. Like just yeah. run what you want to run for a little while and then, you know, don't worry about it so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, Also, this might not be the answer that everyone wants, but like in terms of speeding up the break-in process, like I wash everything the day I get it. One, it makes it mine. I don't have to worry about like, I'm not going to return it and exchange it. Like I, if I bought the thing, I want the thing. So it's mine. But also I will wash like, for instance, I have two or three pair of EG uh, ripstop fatigues. First thing I did is I washed those. And then every time I do a load of laundry, I will wash those with those. And now they're broken in. And I didn't, I wore them a lot yeah. too, but like I just wash it. And I just, guess things that need to be broken in don't need to be fussed over is the problem. Yeah. And I think that like the stuff you want to fuss over or like, you know, if you have a beautiful blazer or sweaters or things like this that are not really meant to be worn that way. Um, I think that's, that's, you just put that in the closet, you know what I mean? And you, and you care, be careful, you dry clean, you do everything you need to do. I think that with denim or boots or anything like that, that you, that are meant to be worn hard, those things just need to be like used 
differently, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Like it, you just, you just need, I start, try, like you're saying, I just try to try to start breaking those in immediately. Yep. I just start beating them up. I will pull jeans across the pavement, whatever I can do to like yeah, get them, cool. get them rocking. So I can start wearing them immediately. Yeah. Have we built a sustainable wardrobe? Uh, yes and no. I mean, it's the, 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 the answer is the same as before. Like let yourself off the hook a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I think the whole point of fashion is like, it's a, it's a lifelong love if you love it and you just like keep figuring it out. I mean, the things that I wore in my twenties, I'm not going to wear now. The things I'm wearing now, mm-hmm. I won't wear in my forties, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, I just think that it's like, don't worry about it so much. Just make the mistakes. Like start to, I think isolate the things you care about and the things you don't care about. For example, yeah. I don't want to have to make choices around t-shirts. I just like white t-shirts. I don't like black t-shirts so much other than like, I actually collect like vintage band tees and yeah. shit like that. But beyond that, like as far as like what I'm actually wearing day to day, I just wear white t-shirts. So I have seven of those that I cycle in and out as needed. I don't think about those. I don't, I like white socks, like white dress socks. I j- only wear those. So take out the things that you just have found that you're not super passionate about personally. Yeah. And have those and don't focus on those focus on building the stuff that you truly care about. Like if it's knitwear or jackets or shoes, whatever it is like, or, or socks or tees, if that's like yeah. your, that, those are your statements, like focus on those. Don't focus on, on all the other stuff and don't, and, and like, but I also think like, I don't want to discourage anyone to like reinvent themselves. We talk about that all the yeah, time. So yeah. if, you, if you decided like you watched a cool movie and you saw a guy or gal dressed a certain way and you're like, I want to look like that mm-hmm. suddenly. I want to change my whole thing up. Just let yourself do it. That's literally the fun part about clothes. Yeah. Like that you get to just completely reinvent yourself whenever you want. Yeah. Yeah. And also just in regards to like the question of like a sustainable wardrobe, I think like it's not really sustainable in, in general to like own a bunch of clothes. So in regards to what Timothy's saying is like, if you, if you haven't worn something in a long time, you have to be like, this is just in regards to being sustainable with your clothing. If you haven't worn something in a long time, you have to be ruthless. It's like, if you haven't worn it in a year, you're probably not going to wear it in the next year. Get rid of it. Keep the things that you like, keep the things that you feel good in. And if you want to reinvent yourself, like then just do it. But again, if the prompt is to like be sustainable, like I kind of like am one in one out, one out at this point, but it hasn't always been that way. I've obviously been here for five and a half, six years. So I've been lucky enough to like amass things that I really enjoy, but yeah, but you've I, also allowed yourself to experiment so that totally, you can get to that point and know totally. what you're, what you're able to like one in one out. Yep. And I know, I know what it is that I like. So I'm, I'm one in one out and I just, I, I just buy things that I know I'm going to wear a lot of now. I don't do a lot of like the piece like acquisition. If I will wear it a lot, I'll buy it. But if I feel like I'm only going to get like one or two wears a season because it's too much of anything. I'm not going to do that. So I would say for me, it's engineered garments because I feel intimately acquainted with it and it's what I'm going to consume season to season most likely. So for me, it's EG. Um, this is, this is in regards to what brand do we like to, what, what is most fun brand to write for us? I think for me, it's actually capital because they, change what they're doing so much and so the, like one season to another season can be a wildly different thing and theme mm-hmm. and i like any brand who does that it makes it exciting it makes it makes you can kind of like change up your whole thing about what you think the brand is yeah. season to season and not every brand does it. i think a lot of brands are a little safer i think even within engineered garments it's like a lot of the similar silhouettes only introducing a few at a time changing up the fabrics and everything so the subtle differences can also be really mm-hmm. cool to mm-hmm. see like how they chose to mix up X, Y, or Z, but I like, I do like brands a lot where it feels like their entire identity could change, um, season to season and they, and it still feels like that brand. Well, capital is impressive too, just for the breadth of offerings. Like, cause we get to pick from the New York collection and the Japanese collection now. So like they already offered a lot, but like, I feel like the amount of, at this point we have a capital shipment once a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because so of the like amount of just, stuff they offer. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's, it's incredibly overwhelming, but when, but it's, it's fun to, yeah go through just because there's it's just so many different things and so many different concepts and ideas happening at once it's really uh it's kind of mind-blowing like how much like how much creative output that company has what are some things that you wish you knew in the beginning stages of starting the store i will let you answer that oh jesus um i don't know and i've kind of like done this a couple times at this point and it's really it's it's just so hard i don't know i don't know like a different answer to give you than than that it's just it's it's a it's 
it's a complete investment. It's not just like, um, it's not just a job. It's like, it's, it's entrepreneurship. So it's, it's like a, it's your, it's your life. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, it's, it's the, what you think about when you're trying to not think about it. You know what I mean? So I think that people that get into it because they think it'd be like fun. It is if you really, really, really deeply care about it and don't think you could really see yourself doing anything else. (laughs) It it is fun then. Um, Outside of that, it is just constant, constant problem solving. And if you don't like that, then you shouldn't do any entrepreneurial thing at all. Yeah, I mean, because you've been doing the buy since the shop opened. You are buyer, et cetera. You wear a lot of hats. But even just like looking from like a product standpoint, the shop in 2017, March, 2017 to now, even just the offerings have changed so drastically. And that is partly due to experimentation information that we wouldn't have had prior mm-hmm. to you starting canoe club, etc. So I feel like there isn't really one answer. I, yeah. I guess that you've kind of nailed it by, by saying that you have to be okay with that. The thing that you're starting, it's not like selling one thing. It's not like you're selling water bottles and nothing else. Like the, you know, it can only vacillate between a couple of different things. You know what I mean? Like if that, that feels like a, you know what it's going to be, you know how it's going to you know go for the mm-hmm. most part. It, there's not a lot of variables with fashion. It, the, by definition, it's going to change and it's going to change rapidly. So yeah. Yeah, being okay with the fact that what you're starting now is going to change season to season. It's going to change month to month. It's going to change year to year. It's just it's it's constant change. So I think being ready for that, um, and the amount of uh, work is the I guess those are the things you wish you knew ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, and like you said to piggyback off the water bottle comment, like if you are a brand that sells water bottles, whether you, let's just say you're a brand that manufactures and sells a water bottle direct to consumer, all you have to do is market the one thing you can market three products under one brand as a multi-brand retailer, it's like one, there's always going to be new brands popping up. There's always going to be, you want what's hot to be in the store, but you also want to like believe in it. So I feel like every year is assessing what, what is this new brand doing? Do we want to bring them in? How is everything that we have? How do we feel about what we have currently? You know what I mean? Like there's just a, there's a lot of factors that change every six months with a multi-brand retailer that other brands that offer a product, whether it's clothing or not, don't. Yeah. It's difficult to have a point of view when you're also representing a lot of point of views. Exactly. Yeah. So managing that is one of the harder things I think that, that especially the creative team does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the store, I love the uh, black and the green herringbone fatigues from eg that would be my answer for like in the store in my personal collection probably my eg fatigues like the uh dead stock heavyweight ones are probably my favorite pant right now yeah you wear these like every single but then yeah, i, I also stuff. wear our yeah. uh canoe club collaboration fatigues from orso so yeah I, i'll say those i'll say those because these have gotten a lot of wear um in my personal collection i just got same thing I always do is I just sort of run like a bunch of $30 vintage Levi's. Most of them won't fit. And then I'll hit on one that's good. Um, I got a good one recently. So I got a new one in the mix. So that's my favorite one in my personal collection right now. As far as the store goes, I don't know if we still have any in stock right now, but we'll get them back. The Wythe Chino is oh, yeah. really great. Like yeah. the, I think they're doing more colors too, but it's a really nice like little bit of linen blend, linen cotton blend, I believe drapes great shape yeah. is like wide without being like drape like too big you know what i mean like yeah. like uh, you're not making a statement really nice fitting clean pant that would just go with anything so i feel like that's one of the better ones we've had in the shop for a little while also we haven't gotten these yet but we are wa- we are awaiting a shipment from orslo here eventually that will have uh like a dark brown corduroy new yorker pant and like that i will snag those instantly so that's my that will be my answer in terms of pant for the fall winter 20 20- to season what are we watching or reading right now (laughs) what are you reading right now (laughs) what is chase reading right now (laughs) timothy and i neither of us are big readers he does more reading than i so i will go ahead and say what are we watching right now um my girlfriend and i are probably going to finish up better call saw here shortly when she gets back into town but i've also been binging 
uh, there's a show on Netflix called Rust Valley Restorers. It's a fella out in like British Columbia that the answers of a 50 year old <laughs> <laughs> retiree. I love it. You guys should watch it. It's great. Time. Three seasons. I've watched them all many times. It's great. That's like my fall asleep show. So Better Call Saul and Rust Valley Restorers. <laughs> Jesus. Well, here's here's my answer. Much more sophisticated. I really only watch the Kardashians, and I I haven't watched anything else lately. I just am not into TV right now. That um, not like in a cool way. Not in like I'm doing. I just nothing's. I I want there to be something, and there's not really anything. We are both eagerly in. awaiting the season three of I think you should leave. Whenever that'll come out. Yep. That will be what I watch for the next six months when it comes out. So. Yeah. Tim Robinson. Actually, real fast. I just fast. like YouTube videos. I don't even like TV anymore. I just want to watch YouTube I do YouTube a lot of videos. YouTube mysteries. Listen, if anybody watching this has a connection to Tim Robinson, the famed comedian, ex-SNL writer, if you have a connection to Tim, can you please put us in contact? We love him. We want to give him some stuff. I think like our, our if we could have like a rope up a list of celebrities that we were really interested in, it would be like Tim Robinson. Yeah. Mine, I'm putting Courtney Kardashian in there for myself. <laughs> the guy that runs Nexpo. Yeah, the guy that runs Nexpo. He's a good, the YouTube channel. Um, um, anybody at like, if LaCroix wants to do a collaboration, we'd be interested in that person's now a celebrity to us, whoever's in charge of their yeah. collaboration. And there's finder's fees. Listen, if you oh, guys connect Sweet us Green with people. Too. Oh, if yeah, we want Green cashew CEO points. is listening, we want to be sponsored by that. Cashew bucks, cashew points. Please put us in contact. John Early. Who's that comedian? He just put out that series with his partner, Kate. Would it kill you to uh, laugh? He uh, name dropped some fashion in a podcast I listened to. So if anybody else has a connection to John Early, connect us. We'd love to be in contact. Any, yeah, find us fees. Just go ahead and shoot your shot, y'all. Put us in contact. To answer the question of, the, it was. What was the question? <laughs> it was, what are we watching? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, whatever. I don't know. YouTube videos. Put me in contact with Tim Robinson. What is the favorite thing we've eaten in the last two weeks? Okay, I actually have an answer for that. My girlfriend and I went out to a date at a spot in Denver called Coperta. It's an Italian restaurant. It's great. Uh, my buddy works there, Sean. He sent out a chef's dish for us. Shout out, Sean. Shout out, Sean. That's our boy. It was uh, like a saffron goat cheese over underneath like some like roasted carrots with like a sunflower sort of fucking like chop on top. An Italian restaurant? Yeah, it was good. Uh, th that's, that's yeah, that or like, uh, you guys know Nong Shim, like Neo Jury, like the, the spicy seafood flavored Nong Shim ramen. That would go up there too. Every day here at the shop, <laughs> the studio. Um... Uh, well, I like I like those uh, what are those things I brought you the the Sanzo the oh, yeah. sparkling water. I like all those. That's new for me. I like sweet green and Whole Foods. I don't like any. I don't like any. I don't. I like food that has brands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want anything that doesn't have a. I want it to be a branded food. <laughs> Is there anything else we want to talk about? Hey, yeah, yeah. Why don't you guys give us some like suggestions for other stuff to do? We're happy to. We'll keep running these if you guys drop other mm -hmm. questions down below um, that we can answer because we're happy to answer the questions. Give us the weird ones. Like it's fun to answer the style ones too. But like, give it. Let's let. We like the we like the funky ones too. Timothy and I, either famously or infamously, have strong opinions that we have had famously. in our brains since birth. And we're looking to share. I would, I'll talk food, music, what I don't, I really don't care. I really don't care. I would love to share my opinion, but I'd also like to know the opinions of other people as well. So like, you know what maybe would be fun is give us your hot takes or opinions yes. and then we'll, we'll tell you, we'll rate them or we'll give you ours too. But I'd yeah, like we'll to rate hear yours them. as well. We'll say whether we agree or not Topics and then we'll share we like. ours. We like talking about fast food or fast casual dining yep. of any kind yep again branded food yeah change we like scary stuff or conspiracy things love i love a mystery not in like a weird way we want it to just be like scary stuff yeah spook me out um and <laughs> and we want, and we like we do like clothes that's yeah. fine we'll do yeah. all those obviously uh what else um 
hardcore music yeah yeah mu- music and, and yeah any like, music but that any week. music but yeah like maybe like if we were to get a little more granular like early 2000s like emo type stuff shoegaze or early 2000s to 2010s hardcore kind of like straight edge stuff like i just that's like, how we that's how we became buddies when mm-hmm. we did all this so yeah stuff like that um what other topics are like that are, are up for that discussion well in regards to that if you had patches on your clothes growing up what were the patches you know oh, if you were a like one. a punk kid like what patches did you have i'd love to hear that um also like is there anybody in the general region of denver boulder that watches these that like we don't know you yet that would be cool yeah we're also i think we're working on like a podcast between we'll do basically what we're doing now except for we'll structure it out a little bit more yeah, yeah so if that, you have like suggestions for people we should talk to we, we don't want to do we yeah we, we can talk to industry people and like probably like low tier celebs but we're really looking for like if you got if you are a customer that wants to chat or something like that let's do that yeah that would be sweet um so yeah any advice or question or like things you want us to do with, with that would be we'd take those suggestions we get the we get the vibe that you guys like to talk to so you know yeah send us send us what you want to talk about yeah let's figure out a way to like maybe do the next frequently asked questions that is what you just mentioned where we're tying in like i would i want to know the opinions of what i want to know what people think that shop with us specifically i want to know the opinions that might be more unpopular yeah give us your hard opinions and we'll respond to them yeah let's do it that way hot takes hot takes is what we want All right, guys, that was another Frequently Asked Question with myself, Chase, and my boss and buddy, Timothy. Um, We kind of already said all this in our various ramblings, but please comment and give us suggestions. Participate with your hot takes. Literally anything, we're down... We're down to like engage. We like this. The more personal it is, the more fun for us on our end too because I feel like we do a lot of the product facing stuff it's fun to kind of do like the more personal stuff as people who hang out together every day and run the shop um yeah so that's about it like comment subscribe and thanks for listening um we'll talk to you soon bye (laughs)